Hey y'all, I'm Karina, and today I'm gonna show you how I draw faces. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm not even an adult, but you guys have been interested in this video for quite some time. I'm gonna show you how I draw faces with pencil, pen, and colored pencil, and maybe digital, I'm not sure yet, and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's start with pencil. Also, this is a Matthew Sorgi sticker, this is one of my stickers, and this is a sticker that my mutual November made, and I will tag all of them. And then I just have my other sticker on the back. These are my two stickers that I have so far. <laughs> By the way, this is a moleskin sketchbook. It is actually meant for art, unlike my last one, so keep that in mind. The paper is pretty nice, to be honest. I'm gonna use my trusty Bic mechanical pencil. It's 0.5 millimeters, regular number two pencil, and yeah, nothing too special about it. When I'm using graphite, I like to use loose guidelines, nothing too special, and then I like to have a kneaded eraser on hand. This generally helps for like erasing very smoothly, very efficiently. And then I like to see where certain features are in comparison to other features on the face. So right now I'm seeing where the edges of the lips are and then I see where the corners of the eyes are in comparison to the edge of the nose. And then I see where that is in comparison to the lips and make sure everything is aligned up as it is in the reference picture. What also helps is just like drawing an imaginary guideline over the reference picture to just kind of visualize it a little better, if that makes sense. So it's really just about seeing where certain things are in proportion to other things to make sure your proportions are all right or as accurate as you can possibly be. And then I like to also map out highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. So right now I'm drawing out highlights on the face that I can see in the reference picture. And then the cheekbones, the shadows right there. And it doesn't always have to be perfect. I like to do a lot of erasing and just really tweaking things until they look right to me. So I'm drawing Ugly Worldwide on Instagram, or Giselle, I believe her name is, and it's really a tedious process of drawing and erasing until I have the most accurate proportions I can draw. I try to find tiny details in the picture, like certain lumps, divots in the face, so I can really make it look like the person I'm drawing. Giselle's face was pretty difficult to draw, because everything is so pronounced and unique, so it was hard to make everything look completely right, but eventually I think I got the shape of her face down. It was just a lot of like erasing and figuring out like where the jawline matches up with the edges of the lips, or like, I don't even know, man. It's really hard to explain stuff like this because it's not a certain step-by-step -step routine that I follow. I just kind of try and study the reference picture as much as I can. It's a lot of like staring very hard at a picture and figuring out what details I should focus on, what features I should really hone in on, what features I want to stand out, what I should put less effort into doing. So like, you know, the, f the shadows around her mouth might not be as important as the shadow right under her nose that's really making it pronounced. So it's really just a matter of like what you think should stand out. And I'm not gonna like tell you exactly what to do. So like really just do what feels right to you. Like if you see really interesting things that you really want to draw, then do it. But um, try to avoid things like, yeah, the shadows around the mouth or like just certain things that could possibly end up looking like, like wrinkles. Even if they are on the reference picture, sometimes you can leave certain things out because not everything is necessary to really replicate 100%. Like when I was shading in the forehead, I definitely shaded a little too much just because I was like, well, there's a shadow here. There's like a mid-tone here, but like really I did not need to go that hard on the forehead. I really could have laid off on it. As far as shading goes, I'd say that pressure is a pretty big factor. And the way that I draw, I kind of go up and down in certain areas, but like in places like the cheekbones, you can see there's kind of curved lines kind of going with the contour of what her face would be and you can do like both of those or you can do like tiny circles and again i'm not going to tell you exactly what to do so like figure out what you like and how you like to shade and go from there because sometimes i feel like shading along with the contour of someone's face but sometimes i just want to go up and down vertically for the entire face which is what i tend to do with ballpoint pen actually it really just depends on like what material i'm using but like in certain areas i'll go like up and down or side to side or like at an angle like what i'm doing here and sometimes i like it sometimes i don't it really just depends <laughs> but um yeah I, I always forget about the ears too so i like to kind of plan out where they are and then just slowly do them over time because they're just not fun to me 
I don't really like drawing ears if I'm going to be honest, but um, yeah, I really procrastinate on certain things. And then I like forgot the eyelashes right there, so I had to go back and do that. And I didn't really put much effort into the hair because I'm focusing more on the face. And now I'm just using a blender to kind of blend things in. This is optional and I know you can make your own from like sketchbook paper, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It really just depends on pressure and like how exactly you like to draw. For this next person, I'm doing things slightly differently. Um, I'm not really using any guidelines, I'm more just like doing really wavy lines or like sketchy lines and trying to figure out where things line up. Like I still lined up the edge of her nose with the corner of her eye, but I didn't try and put as much effort into planning out the proportions. So I just kind of went in on it. Like this is definitely something I like to do when I'm not trying to plan as much, when I'm just kind of sketching, trying to finish something quickly rather than spend a lot of time on it. So. There's not really much of a step-by-step -step process. I'm just building up the whole thing in every single area that I can. Um, yeah, it's not much different in terms of shading than the first one. Um, I'm still just kind of going side to side and just, you know, changing certain amounts of pressure in certain areas, filling in certain shadows, really trying to focus on the proportions and the reference picture and seeing where exactly the shadows fall, where exactly the midtones and highlights are as well. There was a really nice highlight on her nose too. And oh yeah, I spilled water on my laptop. That kind of sucked. I don't have a laptop anymore. Um, but resuming, I just, scribbled on the hair because again i'm not putting too much effort into the hair and i was just kind of mad because i spilled water on my laptop but um yeah i i probably edited this to go by way too quickly but it's really repetitive like honestly practice makes progress <laughs> Moving on to ballpoint pen, I decided to include this because I enjoy drawing with ink and I think ballpoint pens are very underrated and affordable because a lot of people just have them like lying around so if you ever want something else to draw with besides pencil or color pencil, ballpoint pen is always a good option. And I wanted to like draw with something and set an example with something that is very accessible so yeah. Without further ado, I like to do a little pencil sketch first just to get the proportions, all that jazz. My sketching technique, if you want to call it that, varies depending on the reference picture. So like if it's straight on, I tend to use more guidelines, but if it's at an angle like this one, then I tend to do like a little bit of guidelines just to see where certain things line up, but not too many. I just kind of try and go for it and see what happens. And I'm not too worried because at the end of the day, I do have an eraser and I'm just using pencil right now. So yeah, I'm seeing where the mouth lines up with the eyes and going for it. And I did add a little bit of shadows just to like see where they were and like see where the darkest points in the reference picture were. It's not really necessary to like sketch out all the shadows. Um, I like to usually at least draw lines kind of defining the shadows, but it's not really necessary to do any of that. Yeah, I just like to see where things are because I'm a visual learner. <laughs> um, once I'm somewhat satisfied with my sketch, I grab my trusty kneaded eraser and I roll it over the drawing like one would with clay or something like that. And I really like doing this because it's so satisfying. It's like lowering the opacity in real life. Like, wow, crazy, so innovative. And then I just sketch out with my ballpoint pen. I like to use more line work in my ballpoint pen drawings. Um, more than I would with pencil, I guess. So yeah, I like to have some lines to start with. And I also like to have an index card or a scrap piece of paper or a tissue, something to wipe my pen off with, because what happens is ink tends to well up in the pen. Um, I think this goes for like most ballpoint pens. Um, maybe if you have like a higher end ballpoint pen, it might not happen, but yeah, the ink wells up and it just comes out whenever it pleases onto the paper. So it's good to have something to like constantly just wipe off your pen routinely. And it's kind of inevitable for me at least, like I forget sometimes and some time passes by and then I like see a giant blob of ink or not a giant blob of ink, but like you see towards the left of the face, there's like that little dot that's like a little more darker than the rest of the shading. So. 
yeah, good to have something to wipe off the pen. And the way I shade with ballpoint pen, I like to hatch vertically. Um, this excludes the hair, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the line art, obviously, but I really like shading vertically. Like, I don't know what it is. I just, it's so satisfying to me. I start out with like very, very light pressurized um, hatching, and then I slowly build it up. If there's a really dark shadow or something that's already just, you know, really dark, I go ahead and shade dark. I find it really cool because I shade most of the face very lightly and then over time I notice like hey the shadow could be darker and then it all starts to like come together and you can really see different values throughout the face and I don't know it's like a little thing coming together I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about but yeah I for the hair I just kind of scribble it I don't like doing hair I just really like drawing faces at the end of the day, pressure is probably one of the most important parts. Once you tackle shading with certain amounts of pressure, things start to become a lot easier. If you guys take away anything at all about shading from this video, let it be that one, you should take your time with gradual pressure, and two, be really, really tedious about studying your reference. If you don't take time to look at the little details on the person you're trying to capture, they won't really show up in your drawing, you know? Like, you have to notice the details first to actually put them down on the paper. With that being said, do not try and sweat it with the details, and also try and look at the picture as a whole and figure out what areas you should shade darker in, what features the person has that you really want to get right. There isn't one specific way to draw faces, but really looking at your reference can help capture someone's likeness. I only emphasize this so much because I'm aware that some people, including myself, can forget to look at the reference picture, so making sure that you really glance between the picture and your drawing every like 5-10 seconds is really important to make sure you're staying on track. What I tend to unconsciously do is put a lot of effort in the face and certain details on the face and then less attention on the other things like hair and the neck and shoulders. Some people might not want to do that, which is completely understandable, but I find that if the face is the main thing I want to put work into, then it kind of turns that into the focal point. Your eye is automatically drawn to the shading and effort in the face as opposed to the scribbly hair, you know? So that's how I like to think of it. So yeah, we're pretty much done with that part. Here is how the ballpoint pen drawing turned out. I think it looks pretty darn good. And now for colored pencil. I use Prismacolor pencils, which are the only brand I've ever used. They're really good quality, so I never feel the need to switch over or try any other pencils. I start out with a normal pencil sketch. I didn't use as many guidelines for this one and just kind of took a jab at it. There was a bit of trial and error, but I think I got the hang of it. I drew Caliuchus for this one. And I really wanted to do her justice, so I was a bit stressed and anxious about getting the proportions right. Therefore, I kind of messed up a bit more. <laughs> you guys already know the drill by now. I'm just taking my rolled up kneaded eraser and lowering that opacity. This next part is completely optional. It really depends if you have paper that you're okay with bleeding through and if you have alcohol markers or not. I learned this trick on TikTok about a year ago. Basically, you just use an alcohol marker to color in a base layer and then shade with colored pencils on top. I've used this for a lot of my AP artwork and my recreational art as well, and I just love it so much. If you don't have toned paper, this is definitely an easy way to achieve something with a similar effect. So yeah, just take a preferably not dying alcohol marker and go crazy! It doesn't matter if the color is completely even or not, the colored pencils pretty much fix that. Also, make sure your pencils are super sharp. This makes a big difference in your ability to shade. A sharper pencil means that you can really get in the pores of the paper and get like optimal coverage, I guess. For anybody curious, the colored pencil sharpener I use is also the Prismacolor brand, and I got mine at Michael's, it has done me wonders, and I would 100% recommend it. As far as shading goes with colored pencils, I like to shade pretty lightly and just build up layers. Shading too dark initially can build up this waxy layer that's really difficult to work with down the line. I like to go in tiny circles, but change up my shading every so often with some hatching and stuff like that, so I can really build up some textures. What really trips some people up is choosing your colors. If I've learned anything over the years, it's that skin tones are not just brown. They have red, orange, yellow, pink, even some purple, blue, or green in the shadows. I don't always 100% know what I'm doing, but adding vibrant colors can really make your drawing pop. If you have a limited color palette, like a 12-pack of colored pencils, 
That can give you an opportunity to blend your colors and get resourceful. If you're having trouble with color theory, there are tons of videos about it on YouTube that you can find. I'm not sure how common of a tip this is, but blending with a lighter color or even white can really help create a smooth look. I like to use a really light skin tone or cream or off-white, anything like that to blend my colors. Also don't rely on this. Try and shade to the best of your abilities to make it look like it was already blended and then go in with the blending to get that really smooth look. Right now I'm taking a kind of pink color and making the highlights pop. So I went in with a white color pencil to draw those highlights and now I'm kind of going around it with that color to really pronounce them, you know? This also isn't necessary, but I like to use a white Posca pen to really get those solid highlights. And I just like building up layers over and over, like I said. And I like to use purple in the shadows, purple and red mostly. And then for the highlights, I like to go back and put some yellow or orange around them just to really show a variety of different colors. And for her hair, I wanted to do something a little more colorful than the picture was because, you know, I'm not really focusing on the hair, I'm focusing on the face. So I put a lot more purple, red, orange, and yellow than there actually is in the photo because it's very beige in the photo, it's like blonde. But yeah, I did a lot more with the colors and she got cloud goggles on. Um, I do not use black colored pencil as well. I use like a combination of dark brown, dark blue, or dark purple, anything like that, and just combine all of those to make a kind of darkish color. Basically, the main tips I have for coloring skin with colored pencils is to be soft with it. Don't use a lot of pressure and be gradual with your shading. Use a variety of colors to get vibrant tones and keep your pencil sharp. At the end of the day, it is your art and you can choose to take as much or as little of my advice as you want, as much as you're comfortable with. Everyone has their own unique ways of creating and I do not want to insinuate that there is one way to draw faces. As this video is coming to a close, I'm pretty sure you guys already know what time it is. It is artist shout out time! Have you ever wondered where Lin Chirong's profile picture came from? Well, today's artist is Ruby. They're honestly so underrated and their work is so vibey. The colors are warm and nice and it reminds me of summer. Go ahead and give them a follow because they deserve it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around till the end. I hope this video helped you in some shape or form. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you so much. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.